This video is brought to you by Ultium 365 via the World Designs Electronics and Octopod, the fastest search engine for electronic parts. I've got two digital microwave sensors designed for the same job and uses the same Doppler radar to detect moving objects using microwaves. This one is the RCWL-0516 microwave sensor which is smaller in size and it's really cheap. While this one is the Gravity Digital Microwave Sensor V2.0 from the DF robot, which is bigger in size and obviously it's more expensive than the RCWL-0516 microwave sensor. I have already used the Gravity Digital Microwave Sensor V2.0 for controlling lights, for detecting humans behind the walls and recently I used this sensor to create an invisible security system. It has exceeded my expectations so if you are okay with its price then just go for it it works flawlessly but if you are more into saving money and you are okay with six to seven meters detection range then you can start with this one right now i don't know if it can detect moving objects and humans behind the walls and this is what we are going to find out in this video so without any further delay let's get started the components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. The RCWL-0516 microwave Doppler radar is a type of motion sensor that uses microwave radar technology to detect moving objects, humans and animals. It is an alternative to PIR motion sensors which are commonly used in security systems and in automatic lights control systems. The RCWL-0516 microwave sensor has a sensitivity range of up to 9 meters as per the data sheet. When this sensor is in the idle state means when there is no moving object it gives 0 volts or low output signal and when triggered its output pin will switch from low 0 volt to high 3.3 volt for around 2 to 3 seconds before returning to its idle state. This microwave sensor is based on the RCWL-9196 chip that supports a repeat trigger and 360 degrees detection area with no blind spots. All five pins are clearly labeled. This 3.3 volt pin is a 3.3 volt output. This is not a power supply input. This board has an onboard 3.3 volt regulator that can provide up to 100 milliamps for powering external logic circuits. The ground pin should be connected to the ground pin of the controller board. This is the output pin and it gives 3.3 volts when a moving object is detected. So it means it can be used with all 3.3 volt compatible controller boards like ESP8266, STM32, ESP32, Raspberry Pi Pico, Arduino Pro Micro and so on. The VN pin is the input power pin and it accepts a wide range of input voltages between 4 and 28 volts. The CDS pin is for the light sensor LDR, light dependent resistor. This is optional. If you don't want to add an LDR, it's okay. But if you want to use it outside for security purposes or for controlling lights and you don't want this sensor to trigger its output during the daytime, then it's good to add an LDR. Now, you might be thinking if there is any way to control the duration of the output pulse because by default the output gets high for 2 seconds when a moving object is detected. Now, this trigger cycle time can be increased by adding an SMD capacitor over here. And if you want to reduce the detection range from 7 meters to let's say 5 meters then you can add a 1 mega ohm resistor over here. Try different resistor values and you will see how it affects the detection range. For the light sensitivity adjustment, you can add a resistor over here. It can be from 47 kilo ohms to 100 kilo ohms. You can use a fixed type resistor or a variable resistor. This is the mounting location for an optional onboard photoresistor. So you can solder your LDR sensor over here. So that's all about the technical specifications and pinout. Now we can start with the interfacing. Ultium 365 lets you hold the fastest design reviews ever. Share your designs from anywhere and with anyone with a single click. It's easy. Leave a comment taking your teammate and they will instantly receive an email with a link to the design. Anyone you invite can open the design using a web browser. 
Using the browser interface, you are able to comment, markup, cross probe, inspect, and more. Comments are attached directly to the project, making them viewable within Ultimate Designer as well as through the browser interface. Design, share, and manufacture all in the same space with nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from Ultimate Designer without changing how you already design electronics. Ultium 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Get real-time component insights as you design with Octopart built into Ultium 365. Octopart is the fastest search engine for electronic parts and gives you the most up-to-date part data like specs, data sheets, gate models, and how much the part costs at different amounts, etc right in the design environment so you can focus on your designs links to the ultium designer ultium 365 and octopart are given in the description the vn pin is connected with the arduino 5 volt pin ground is connected with the arduino's ground and the output pin is connected with the digital pin 12. the 5 volt buzzer is connected with digital pin 4 through this general purpose npn transistor Anyway, here is the complete circuit diagram which you can download from our website electronicclinic.com. I have added a link in the description. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. For this sensor, you don't need to download and install any libraries. Just define the pins then till the microcontroller board which pins are going to be used is the input and output. And then in the loop function, write a simple code to turn on the buzzer when any movement is detected. Using this code, you can control a relay. Simply remove the buzzer and connect a relay module with the digital pin 4 of the Arduino. You can also add a code for the GSM module. If you want to send an SMS, you can check my projects on GSM module. Anyway, I have already uploaded this program and now let's start with a practical demonstration. When there is no obstacle in front of the sensor, it works just perfectly. Now I'm going to put it inside this box and let's see if it can still detect any movements. It can detect movement but the detection range is reduced. Now I'm going to put it inside this drawer and let's see if the microwaves are powerful enough to penetrate through this wooden board. The detection range is further reduced but it's working. It can be used inside drawers and cupboards for the security purposes. Now I'm going to perform my final test. Let's go ahead and check if this microwave sensor is powerful enough to detect a moving object or a human behind the wall. The detection range was really reduced. It could only detect me when I was very close to the brick wall. While on the other hand, the gravity microwave sensor V2.0 from the DFRO board could detect moving objects from behind the walls without any issues. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.